Hello everybody, welcome back. So let's have a quick look at the charts then, shall we? It's Bitcoin obviously doing a, a very nice move here. You can see that very clearly on the one hour. Bring it down to a daily, we'll get a bit more perspective and then we'll have a look on the four hourly as well for what it means. So at the moment here yeah, we did have a spike above this 200 exponential moving average. At the moment it looks like it's wanting to uh, try and reclaim it. But if we close below it, it's no real big deal. It's okay, we're still back inside the inside range. So we broke out of this uh, descending uh, wedge formation. So this is what I was saying is... It's a bullish formation once it's broken out of, but because it's descending, uh, who knows where it'll take us. It took us all the way down to what looks like could be, and fingers crossed, a double bottom. All right. So this is very similar to what happened in 2019. Uh, we spoke about this on the live stream. So back in 2019, we had our big parabolic run here coming out of the bear market. And uh, it went too far too fast, consolidated for the best part of two months, came down to do a bottom and then a double bottom. And this was based upon the previous support and then resistance um, of the bear market so uh, lots and lots of price action here so many many supports and then, a, and then a breakdown from there similar kind of behavior over here if you think about what's really happening so a big breakdown obviously this is a very short uh, I wouldn't even call it consolidation to be honest it's a dump and, and, and possibly a reaccumulation and the double bottom formed at the breakout here and the bottom over here so it does have historical relevance to where it's bottomed if it has um, and uh, it's not as strong as the previous one but I suppose the same analysis applies so hopefully this has proved to be a double bottom and we can start to form an uptrend now this isn't an uptrend at the moment I should say this is a big spike of price action so um, I'm not saying that this isn't a bullish situation it is um, but there's there's two components mainly that went into this gi giant move first of all the RSI breakout so we've had um, resistance all the way down since back over here really and um, and we broke out of there and this is a massive massive shift in momentum um, and also obviously the the wedge formation that we've spoken about so two main components that led to such a large move um, but the main thing for me is uh, we're going to start going turbo bullish once this top end of the reaccumulation phase is, is is broken out of and that's all the way up at 49,000 at the moment we're back on inside the inside range over here between 33,000 and 41,000 and that's fine you know that's fine something like this shouldn't just go straight to the moon we, we wouldn't really want that um, but you know a moon uh, could be seen I would say you know towards the end of this year and I suppose that's the same thing that we've been saying the entire time you know I reaccumulate here for a period of three or month three months or so <clears throat> and then finally find our way into an uptrend so the uptrend we can start to talk about on the four hourly there's a very very strong chance almost guaranteed but again we don't play anything until it's taken place uh, golden cross form on the uh, on the four hourly that is that is very significant and very tasty. And golden crosses get dumped into all the time. So be prepared for a dump all the way down to the 200 exponential. Not saying it's going to happen, but it's it's quite common that that would happen. Uh, a retest of that, whether it's immediately or or um, or over time, um, is is quite likely, and that's fine. It's a, it's retesting significant areas of what used to be resistance that would now be support. Uh, and it doesn't mean that we'll come down to you know 33,000 or 34,000 you know these are moving averages that are moving up quite steeply at this stage now so if we get this cross which it does look like we're going to get um, over the next day or two really at this stage it really is that steep over the next, at some point this week anyway let's just say that and then a retest of those moving averages wherever they may be at the time and again they are facing upwards so price action is going to change every four hourly for that technically that support level um, so the support would get higher and higher and higher each time and that is a good sign because our death cross I mean the main one we got obviously we got this one which wasn't good but then we, we were followed off with this one here and we've not had a positive cross ever since so this is the start of a, a bullish reaccumulation now where we can start to form uptrends on the four hourly and uh, and if these moving averages all become you know essentially where they're supposed to be in a bull run which is the uh, the smallest term time frames at the top and the lowest at the bottom um, then that's fine uh, th th that's what we want and the battle will be fought and hopefully won on the four hourly and again you know one lo other thing in uh, in hope for the bulls if we see this uh, this multi-year uh, Bitcoin uh, chart here Every time we close below 33, well, that's not 33,000. It's the, t uh, the 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 50 exponential moving average um, has always worried me. Um, although you know, looking at this chart on this cycle specifically has not worried me as much uh, because we've closed below it 
every year, you know, 2019, 20, and obviously 21. We've only closed one candle below it this year, uh, but it did worry me a little bit. But now, obviously, the candle body closed from yesterday um, or last night at uh, 35,000, very safe area to have closed at. Uh, anywhere above this green 50 exponential is, is good, and, uh, and it's bull market territory. When above it, it's bull market. When below it, technically bull market, or possibly, uh, or historically, should I say, there is a strong chance of a bear market so we're above it again now so again the bulls look like they got the upper hand but but be prepared for a, a bit more downside now this is the interesting thing uh, and for me it doesn't come as much of a surprise bitcoin dominance is going up right so when you see all these altcoins uh, that we're seeing at the moment moving up they're moving with bitcoin bitcoin uh, dictates the market or is dictating the market as we speak um so uh, we can look at altcoins right and we we do all the time especially on the live stream you, you know the patreon live stream that's usually what we end up doing um, but overall this is the picture uh, which is that the bitcoin dominance in my opinion is likely to increase to these uh, resistance levels up here uh, and then we can talk about really getting into some uh, decent altcoin uh, action i i i strongly believe that uh, as bitcoins you know uh, dictating the market and uh, and it's gone into an uptrend hopefully uh, recovery should I say that uh, alts will lag behind and some may lag significantly others perhaps maybe like ethereum might not and there'll be obviously a, a whole range of other ones that completely outperform Bitcoin throughout this period but generally speaking when Bitcoin dominance going up that's basically what it means it, it means that Bitcoin is taking the lead overall with the market cap and uh, and alt seasons are best played at supports and resistances on this chart so I'm not saying that altcoins aren't going to gain they clearly are I hold quite a lot of altcoins I've been meaning to make an altcoin video about all the ones that I do hold and um, so I still hold quite a lot uh, but the next uh, wave of buying should I say that I'm looking to do will only take place at, at resistance uh, whether it be some here and some here then um, in anticipation for a rotation even though it's probably not going to be as significant as January it would be a rotation all the same you get two three four weeks maybe of, of alt rallies versus Bitcoin and then you just go back into Bitcoin or into tether or whatever it is that you want to do so altcoins are moving with the market but as as far as the um, you know the the dominance chart and what that's telling us is concerned Bitcoin is still going to be uh, the main focus for me and my strategy, which is focus mostly on Bitcoin. Uh, and then when the time is right, we go hard and heavy into some new altcoin positions. But, you know, across the board, you know, alts are doing really well. And um, it's, it's it's nice to see some of the alts that I've got doing well as, well, uh, as also. Some not doing quite so well. But Bitcoin is basically dragging everything up uh, at the moment. And if we get this golden cross and even if we get dumped down into it, I'm really happy to see that sort of thing because it does suggest a change of behavior. Obviously, we've got the, the, the trend that we've spoken about broken out. We've got the RSI breaking out. We've got closure above the green 50 exponential. That's really good. Um, there's so many things about the chart which is now looking quite promising, but be prepared for some downside in the interim uh, to test these levels of what used to be resistance as support. Anyway, I'm going to leave it with you there. There's not much to go by, but yeah, hopefully this will continue. Don't expect the moon uh, to be hit immediately. Honestly, time is 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 the main factor here. This is still in the inside range of accumulation. We have gone up nicely. That is good. But let's just have a bit of a, a stand back and, and recognize what we're looking at here. We're still back. We're back in the uh, the range that we've been playing for such a pro such a long period of time. Accumulation can be really pain painful. But in in this instance, it's good because we're above moving averages of significance and not below. So it is showing a change of behavior. But we are still in the accumulation range, uh, and and with that means that we've got resistance here, resistance here, and obviously on the daily we've st we've certainly got more moving averages above us. We've got the 200 exponential, which is w what is really trying to be reclaimed at the moment here, coming in around 38,600, uh, and obviously the 200 ex uh, moving average uh, up here at 44. So there's a lot above us uh, to, to break out from. Uh, we've moved a lot already. I'm not complaining. I'm just being realistic about it. Um, it's it's going to take a little bit of time in my expectation, uh, and uh, we'll, I would really, really want to see some decent signals take place on the Ichimoku cloud. We're not going to get that anytime soon. Uh, in fact, to be perfectly honest with you, we probably won't get any decent signals on that um, indicator for probably about two months. But that also, I would say, goes hand in hand with what could be expected from this. If we're in this accumulation phase at this level now, we continue to go sideways, maybe sideways and up. 
for another two months and then we get one of those signals then that might spark a nice significant rally like a real one you know uh, up and out of this giant accumulation phase 48,000 49,000 and then beyond to you know whatever it's going to be at that point uh, breaking a new all-time high but again you know that's all a little bit down the pipeline and we can only play signals when we get them at the moment we are having a definite change of behavior but we're still in the zone of reaccumulation which is good I'm fine with that anyway thanks for watching I hope you have a nice day take it easy